Our next fringe benefit is where you receive the right to use a motor vehicle from your employer. So in other words, this is where your employer gives you a car to use. Now this is most often and commonly known as a company car. Now again guys, you must make sure to see here, this is not the same as a travel allowance. Students often mess up a travel allowance or sometimes they even call it a car allowance. Guys, please remember the word allowance means money. So a company car, they give you the actual vehicle, car allowance, you have your own vehicle and they give you money to cover your costs. Now this right of use of a motor vehicle, like the travel allowance, very important and can count up to seven or eight marks. Okay, so very, very, very important that you see it. There will be no value, in other words, there will be a null fringe benefit if the vehicle is given for all, um, is available for use by all employees. So if this is where we have a business and outside in the parking lot, there's a car and I say to all my employees, listen, if you need a car during the day, if you quickly need to go out to the shop to get lunch, you may use the car. Right, then no one can be taxed on it. If the product uses incidental and it is not kept at or near an employee's house. Now what I mean by this is, this is where I give you a car and I say, here's a car for you to drive in. But, it must not go to your house in the evening. So what you'll do, is you'll drive the car around in the day to your clients, and then you'll bring it back to the office, and you'll leave it at the office, or at the premises of the employer, and then you'll go home in your own vehicle, or you'll take a taxi, or whatever the case might be. So it's important for you to understand, it may not be at your home and prior uses incidental again. So it must be for business purposes. Or, the last one is, if it is a requirement of your job to have a vehicle, and that you must use the vehicle outside of normal business hours sometimes, and it is not available for prior to use. Now, what you need to see here is, in this case, the person might take the car home, but it must be a condition of his job that he must be able to use it outside of normal hours. So, for example, a person that drives an ambulance will have this. So if there's an emergency after hours, they can get in the ambulance and can go and see it. Or a person that works in a factory, an engineer who needs to go out in the middle of the night to fix something if it goes wrong. So I give that person a car, they can use it after hours, they park it at their home, because obviously they need to leave from home, but they can't use it for prior to use at all. So they can't say, I'm going to quickly go to the shop with it. No, then it's an issue. Right, so in all of those, null value. Okay, so guys, how are we going to calculate this? This slide over here gives you a complete template of how to calculate this fringe benefit. And you'll see I'm going to expand a little bit later on also. But if you understand this, then you've basically got it. So what I wanted to see is what we're going to do. Is we are going to calculate an amount by taking the value of the vehicle and multiplying it by 3.5 or 3.25% and multiplying it by the number of months. From that, we can deduct the value of business travel. Remember, we try and tax a person only on private use. So if you deduct all the business travel, you're only left with private. Then, if the person pays for license, insurance, and maintenance, you can claim a deduction for that as well. Only on the private kilometers, because you've deducted all of the business kilometers. And if they are, if they pay for fuel, you can claim that as a deduction as well, also on the private kilometers. And that net amount over there is the cash equivalent. So why does this count a lot of marks? It counts marks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven marks at least. And if there's a bit of calculation over here, it can be eight or nine marks. So make sure that you know how to do this. And please note, you can only claim deductions again if a lockbook has been kept. Right, so the first thing that you need to know is we need to know what is the value of the vehicle. So it is, if I take you back to this calculation, this template, we are now trying to determine the value of the vehicle. How do you know what that is? Now basically what they tell you is they tell you that if the employer purchased the vehicle, it's usually the cost. But you'll see everywhere here we talk about the retail market value. 
And that is because no matter how they acquire it, you must use the retail market value. Now, this will be given to you in the exam per your Sanka ITC exam on pronouncements. Right, but now there's a special rule. The special rule says, if your employer obtained the vehicle, so I'm going to just put an example down here. Let's say the employer purchased the vehicle on the 1st of March 2015, but they gave it to you more than 12 months after acquired it. So they gave it to you, for example, on the 1st of March 2017. I want you to see there is 24 months in between there. What they then tell you is for each full 12 months that have passed, so each completed 12 month period, you will reduce the value of the asset by 15% on the reducing balance method. So, if I give you this as an example over here, an employer purchased a vehicle on the 1st of January 2014 for 100,000 rands and he gives it to the employee as a company car on the 1st of January 2016. So, between January 2014 and January 2016, two years have passed. Two completed 12-month periods. So, we will take that 100,000 rands and we will reduce it by 15%. So, you'll multiply it by 85% for year one and again by 85% for year two because it's reducing balance method. The other way of doing it is to say 100,000 minus 15%. Gives us 85,000, and from that to deduct 15% as well. Remember, reducing balance method, like you've studied in accounting before. Okay, so there we go. So please be aware of this, guys. You need to look when it was acquired and when it was given to the employee for the first time. Please note here, please note here, this is different. It's not if the, if the employer acquired it on the 1st of March and, they, and it is now the 1st of March 2017 but the employer has gave it to the employee the first time in March already. The employer, employee has just now been using it for the last two years. Then you will not decrease the value. So you only decrease the value if the employer purchased it and gave it to the employee more than 12 months later. Alright, so then guys, we now know how to do the determined value. We now need to multiply it by either 3.5 or 3.25%. Now, how does that work? You use 3.5% almost always, but you'll use 3.25% if there is a maintenance plan for the vehicle. So now I want you to just see, do you want a company car? Let's quickly talk about it. So, you get a company car, 350,000 rands. Now guys, a 350,000 rands is obviously a lot of money, but in the reality, 350,000 rands is not a very expensive vehicle necessarily. So I just want you to see something here. So let's say you had it for the entire year. I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing there. I multiply it by 12, not 12 over 12. That means it's 147,000 rands. So what it means is for you, if you do not claim any deductions against this and you get a call for 350,000 rands, they will calculate 147,000 rands as a cash equivalent. Now what does that mean? It means that when you do your calculations for your taxable income, where you now put your salary in, you are going to put this fringe benefit in there. So I want you to see what it means. They will treat it as if you received 147,000 rands in cash. So just think about that for a second, guys. If you go and you buy, if you get a car of 350,000 rands to use, and you use it for the entire year, they'll add 147,000 rands to your income. So you're going to pay tax on that. Now, guys, that's very high. A car will not cost you, if you go and finance it, even 147,000 rands a year. So what I'm trying to show you here is back in the day, they used to, everybody wanted a company car. It's not necessarily the best thing for you anymore. The only time you should get a company car is if you can claim a deduction against it. And remember, you will be allowed to claim a deduction against it if you keep a lockbook. Alright. So the rest of these rules, guys, just a couple of vague, uh, smaller rules. 
If you use the uh, vehicle for less than a month, it must be apportioned. So this will be, for example, I give it to you on the 15th of January for the first time. So then it will be cost times 3.5% times, let's say, 16 over 31, right, for that month. There is no reduction if the employee temporarily does not use it. What does this mean? So this is where I give you a company car. And then let's say during the year in December, you decide that you are going to go on leave for the entire December and you're going to take a different car with you. So for the entire December, your car, you don't use the company car. This section over here tells you that's fine for you. Unfortunately, you will still have to multiply this by 12 months and not just by 11 months because of the fact that you still have the right to use it. So please just note, guys, if a person goes on leave or anything like that, they'll still get taxed on it. Okay, so now we said that you can claim this as a reduction. Um, you can claim a deduction against this for all the costs that you've incurred. So if I take you back, all of these less amounts here. Now, what you need to see here, guys, over here, you'll see I've made a little comment. Please note, pay attention to when we use business kilometers and when we use private kilometers. Students often mess this up. You will see I've used color coding for business kilometers. It's all in red. And I've used um, color coding for private kilometers, which are all in green. Right, so please make sure that you pay attention to that when you're studying. If you can't get your head around this, honestly, study this all by heart because it's as simple as that. Okay, so... The first thing is, you must have a logbook of the kilometers traveled. If you don't, you can't claim any deduction. So, the first thing that you will do, is you will deduct all of the business travel that took place. So, I'm going to just thumb suck a fringe benefit here. So, let's say the car had a cost of 100,000 rands, 3.5%, and we used it for the full year. Okay, 42,000. So, I'm going to, kilometers traveled, just to show you. Kilometers, let's say business is 10,000 kilometers and private is 5,000 kilometers. Okay, so the 42,000 rands, you can deduct the business travel. So, how will we deduct the business travel from this amount? You take the fringe benefit amount, 42,000 times the business kilometers over the total kilometers. Right, so 28,000 rands, and that gets deducted. So I want you to see over here, we are then left, that 14,000 over there, that 14,000 rands is what? Private travel. Because we deducted all of the business travel. It's the same as if I took that 42 over there and I multiplied it by 5,000 over 15,000 and you'll see it also gives you the 14,000 obviously. Okay, so that's the first thing that you can do is you can deduct that. Then, if the employee pays for license, insurance and maintenance, you can claim those costs as well as the deduction. But now important here guys, I'm going to just put it down here. Let's say I'm just going to for now license, maintenance, and insurance. I'm just going to use all of them. Let's say together it is 5,000 rands for the year. Okay. What I want you to see, we need to deduct those costs now. You will say 5,000 rands times what? Now remember, and this is where students mess it up, so I want you to pay attention to this. This is the mistake that students make. They say then, times business kilometers over total kilometers. Now guys, if you do that, you're wrong. Why? Because over here, you've already deducted everything relating to business from the full amount. So this what you've got left here is only private kilometers. So you can only deduct private kilometers against private. So what does it mean for us? You will not say times 10,000. You will say times the private kilometers. Oh, 
over the total. So please make sure that you see private, private, private. Students always go and use the business kilometers there and then you're wrong and guys, if I've now said it to you and you've got it here, you can't make the mistake. I mean, you can't after I've told you this. Right, so just take the time and study it. It's a lot of marks, don't throw it out. Right, and then the last one, fuel. If the employee pays for the fuel, it's important for you to see the following here. You will not use the actual fuel cost. You will use the fuel per the travel allowance table. Although this has nothing to do with travel allowance, you will go and find the fuel per kilometer in the deemed cost table, and that is what you will use. So, in summary, guys, this is how you will do the calculation. The value times percentage times the number of months. Less all the business, right? So pay attention. Business kilometers over total kilometers. That gives us the value of prior use. From that, we can deduct insurance, maintenance, and license, and all of those guys, C times private over total. And then the fuel, remember, you use the travel allowance table times the prior kilometers. So your job, make sure that you see when to use what kilometers. It's very simple. Once we use the business, we only use, deduct the prior after that. And that is your company car fringe benefit. Okay, then just a couple of ones or two small little rules here, not as common. Um, if you receive more than one vehicle, company car, what do we do with it? Okay, so the first rule says if the taxpayer uses both primarily for business purposes, then only the cash equivalent of the vehicle of the highest private use will be included. So in other words, what you'll do is you will calculate which of the vehicles has the highest fringe benefit value, and that is the one that will be taxed. Now, how can you use two business vehicles for, uh, primarily for business purposes? This will be, for example, let's say I live in Cape, uh, in Cape Town. Okay, I live in Cape Town. But the place I work for also has a branch in Johannesburg, and I have to work between the two of them often. So in Cape Town, my company gives me a company car so I can drive around there. And then I fly to Johannesburg very often, and there's another company car that's over there, which I also use. That's then both of them used primarily for business purposes. Careful also what they sometimes do. They have Johannesburg and Cape Town, or actually not, let's just do it like this. They'll have uh, car one and car two, Car 1 goes to the employee, and car 2 goes to the employee's spouse. Then it's not both primarily used for business purposes, and then you'll do a calculation for each of those. Okay, then guys, there's just a special rule also here that says that if we have two vehicles, like we saw here, that are used primarily for business purposes, then I have the option now. If I choose to only get taxed on one of them, like I just said, then that will be fine. But if I've kept a logbook for them, then both of these, I will not be able to claim the deductions against it. Right, that's um, important that you see that. And that's for the other costs incurred. So not very common, guys, to see this. Just be aware of it.